All right, everyone, well, we're long here. Week 10. So, we've pieced it all together, haven't we? We've got our layers, we've understood that maps are layers, we've understood that we need to have the ability to go up and down through our visuals, which is actually makes our report content much more valuable. So, again, using more and more layers and actually starting to think about the layers that we're gonna have. Okay, the final piece, right, the final piece of the puzzle, and in a lot of ways, one of the most important pieces, but it's often neglected or not considered fully, is of course your look and feel. Okay, so what we've used so far for a lot of what we've shown is kind of just a white background, just a basic background. My advice would be don't, okay, don't do that. Think about what you're doing. So for your business, for your company, you're going to find that you've got corporate colour schemes, okay. So for Geordie, Geordie Intelligence, we've got kind of like the light blue, we've got then some colours that go off there, so actually it's the, um, I don't know what the right word is, but they're all complementary colours and picked from the thingy, we've got a whole branding guide that we use, but you need to do that, and you need to make sure that your content is accessible and easy to get the most out of as well, and as well as that, just general look and feel makes a massive difference to the way that people will consume your data and the way they will use it, access it, and get results from it. So what do I mean? Let's have a look. Let's cut an hour into Power BI and have a check. All right, so here we are, yeah? Power BI desktop. Okay, just here, because it's easy enough, isn't it? Right? And this is kind of what we've got to start with. And you can kind of see this is, we're used to this concept. So the first thing we need to be thinking about right, is colours. Right? And what are colours going to drive? Now, human beings, right, we're built to be receptive to colours as a, in general, right? which is why things like being colour blind and things like that are seen as such a, a, a disability or a disadvantage. Okay? And it's important that you think about that when you're building your content as well. So Power BI has concepts of themes, right? Themes are really deeply embedded within Power BI and in terms of actually what the expectation is of when you start to build and piece together your visuals. So if we have a look here, Power BI has a themes section, okay? It's themes here. You can click go and browse additional themes, you can go and you can create your own from scratch. Okay, I would say, no matter what project you are doing, be it for your business, be it for a client, always build a theme. One of the first things you should do is get a theme, right? You're gonna have a branding guide, you're gonna have things like that. Get the theme kicked off and started because it just makes a big difference, okay? Basic theme, start it there, make it public to everybody who's going to use stuff and it's there okay think of it like your calendar right so just as the calendar we'd make it available to all we're not looking to try and make it hidden or do anything fancy with it it's like get out there use our theme that's the important thing and you can see you pick a theme it'll make a difference to it consider your theme take the time and go through it and don't be afraid as i say early on to go through here and to select to customize the current theme because you can always start with one there go through pick one update it save it down and share it out with everybody the next step right, is one that's often forgotten so when we're looking here and when we're hovering over you can see i've got little stuff that comes up right, filters and it, focus mode, all these kind of things, right? When you're presenting your content out, that can be really distracting. So you need to think about when you want to use that and when you don't, okay? These are referred to as, these, yeah, they're referred to as the visual headers. So in all the visuals that you've got, under the second general, under the general tab in the formatting, you can see way down here, you've got visual headers and you can choose to have them on or off. And you can even select it at a, a, an icon level in terms of which ones do we want them to be able to see or not, right? 
typically you'll kind of hide them all or leave them all but you might have a use case where you want to have specific areas that you just hit that you're not able to see in a particular visual so think about that as i say if you're doing a presentation layer that you just want people to be able to consume hide them The other thing that I do, and this is something I really push and do and advise all my clients to do, right, is let's get into this. So if we pick an area here and we choose to go to the drill through on it that we've built, okay, we can see I've built this and we can choose to look and see in particular areas and see, oh, you know, we can see this one has failed at some point, right? So we've got this lovely inspection overview report allowing me to look and see roughly what's going on in a particular area. So we've gone down to this NTA perspective, yeah? And it's, I'm still not fully sure if I like the NTA side or not. I think it's, you know, it gives a really good level of detail, but I think you can see from a lot of them, there's only ones or twos in here. It's a few in Manhattan that have close to a thousand or, you know, 500 or so or plus, but it's in general, it's quite a small area. So it's quite usable and I think it's quite accessible. Um, and certainly I think from a water perspective, it'd be very useful to understand. Is these okay? Are these not okay? So we'll, we'll figure out. I'm gonna play around with this a bit more in the next week or so, and then we're gonna build a proper report pack for this, okay? But what I wanted to show you this for was, this is kind of basic, isn't it? We can kind of see this makes sense, right? But if I have nothing selected and I go to the format page piece, what I've actually done is I've already put in a background, okay? Now, in this one, I've potentially used one that's a little bit busy and I've done stuff. I wouldn't recommend doing something like this, but the point is, is that you're laying something out already, okay? And you're saying, right, this is with the standard presentation layer. And then, because I've got that, I can make sure it's all pixel perfect, as it were, so everything's lined up. People aren't gonna look and say, oh, I don't like that. Okay, and then I'm just shuffling and fitting visuals on top of there. Because we're just laying visuals on top of an existing framework, that framework is always gonna be consistent. And that then makes it very important that we think about what is being presented on top of it. Okay, but remember, okay, just because it's there, and I'm just showing this for the sake of argument, okay, there's nothing to stop us doing something like this and stacking multiple visuals on top of a shape to build it up. We could even start to layer visuals on top of each other. We can do all sorts of other things with them. Okay, so it's, there's a lot of power that doing that gives you. And then the main thing I would say is just make sure that you hide the visual level headers unless you need them and think through about what you're presenting. So it's much more about thinking through and considering the user experience of the person who's going to be consuming your data insights, the more you can make it so they can just go in, click, 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 get what they need. Oh, brilliant. Okay. It's a game changer for people. So how do I lay these out? What do I need to do? So the way these are done is it, I typically just use PowerPoint, right? It's dead easy to do PowerPoint. You can find if you've got really complex ones, there's a registry key you need to update. I might put a link, I'll put a link down below. In fact, I will put a link down below to the article talking about the registry key. Um, and it's to do with when you export the image that you build, okay? So what we're gonna do is you kind of build up a page here, and then at the end, you go file, export, change file type, and then pick PNG save as, right, and pick a location for that, okay? Right. Typically in practice, when I've done this with people, I've never got beyond 20 slides, right? 20 slides sounds a lot, but when you start thinking through in terms of, when you start thinking through in terms of each and every page type that you're gonna have, start with four or five, and then you'll find additional ones. You go, oh, we really need this report. Oh, this would be better for it, okay? Generally, kind of push back, you want to minimize the numbers, but you, you're going to add extra ones, okay? One of the nice things that you get with this is you get shapes that you just couldn't do normally with Power BI. So we've got like here, where you could build something that we'd use 
like with these cut off corners. Again, that might be something that's gonna give a really nice impact or effect to your report content. So the final thing, now we're back here in Power BI Desk, in uh, the Power BI service. The final thing is to think about certification of data sources, okay? Now, certified data sources is something that businesses need to be doing, okay? Determine who can certify, definitely, step number one, right? You don't want everyone to be able to certify. Everyone, by default, within Power BI and the Power BI service has the ability to promote a data source, okay? Which is this one, down here. Okay, so we've promoted legacy. Hey, I've done this, it's great. Yay. Okay. What they don't have the ability to do is to promote, okay? And that's the bit that you really want to restrict and lock down. So a promoted data source, like this one, yeah, is going to be something that you're saying is really good for the business, isn't it? Okay, we're saying this data source is the golden source. Right? Remember, this data source is coming from our data set, which is golden, right? But you start to piece together everything, okay? So you should be piecing together and saying, right, we've got the golden content that we're going to use and we've got the golden data sets as well, right? So those would be things that you would want to be certified and have made very clear to people, these are the sources you should use. So if we come through here, how do we certify something? So if we go into the settings, we can see in the settings, we've got endorsements and discovery, okay? So we are gonna turn around and say, this one is certified, right? Because this is our production data set, this is gonna be certified. And that's gonna make it appear at the top of everyone's list. So what have you reckon that? Okay. I think we've covered everything that we can do talking about layers and the thought and the processes that go through. And I'm hoping that you're getting the idea that Power BI is a very much multifaceted, multi-layered platform that needs to be considered across all aspects of it. It's not as simple as just, we're gonna put some pretty pictures on a page, right? There's a lot more goes on behind the scenes to make those pretty pictures have the impact that they should have and to help your business really get the maximum results out of any data that they produce, okay? Insights only come when context can be applied to a data set, right? So you're gonna have tons of data coming through your business, tons. Tons more than you, re than you realize that you've got, okay? But you're only gonna get value out of that if you can apply context to it and make that context appropriate to the situation. So that's part of your layering, okay? On top of that, you then need to make it accessible to your community. So you've got the two sides of that. So we've got the certification, we've got the theming so that it's a consistent look and feel of it. And we've got kind of other things like using tool tips and drill throughs and all those kind of things that actually start to make your data really accessible to people and very simple to understand, okay? It's something to always work through though and you're always gonna be able to improve on it and you're always gonna be able to do more and more and more, okay? So think about the layers, makes your life better, doesn't it? Yeah? Champion. All right. Have a great week, stay safe, take care, ta-da.